what is good family hope you guys are having a blessed one um so today we're going to be doing a mid drop fade right and to start off this cut we're going to come in with my clipper closed and all that means is the lever on the side of the clipper i just went ahead and closed that all the way and the reason i'm creating it with my clipper instead of my trimmer like i usually do is because this is just gonna allow me to get rid of that first line a lot easier right so right here i'm just creating that nice drop effect and now before we go into our next step i want to go ahead and line up his arch area right and the reason i want to do this is because i want to keep this area of the lineup as dark as possible so to prevent me from taking the fade too high or cutting too much off of that area I'm gonna go ahead and line it up first. So to get into the next step, I'm gonna come in with my clipper all the way open. And right here, I'm going up about a thumbs width, a four inch here. And I'm keeping that same exact shape that I created with my baud line, right? Which was the clipper closed. So you'll see me just brush and continue to just go over that line to make sure it is a clipper all the way open. And now to go ahead and start getting rid of the line between the closed and the open, this is makes it a lot easier. I'm coming in with my lever, not all the way closed, just slightly open. And then as I move up in that guideline, I'll go ahead and open that lever gradually, right? So essentially I made that line closed and then I made the second one open. And all I need to do to get rid of that middle line is go halfway with the lever. And then if we need to detail, we just open and close the lever as needed. You feel me? So right here, I'm coming in close and I'm just tapping at that line. And then I went ahead and opened the lever just slightly. And then I opened it some more as I get higher up in that guideline. And that's pretty much blended out, right? And then you're just going to play with the lever if you see any dark spots that need to be detailed. And now following that clipper all the way open, we're going to come in with my one guard all the way open. And again, I'm going up about a thumbs width, a full inch here. And I'm keeping that same drop shape that we created with that initial bald line. And we're just staying real consistent with it. So you'll see me go over the same spot a couple times just to make sure that it is truly a one open guideline. Using the corner of the blade is going to help a lot, especially to go ahead and keep, it's going to help you keep that drop effect without taking off too much. So I'm going ahead and just going towards the back with it. And I'm cutting against the grain of the hair. So right there, you saw me go sideways in any direction to go ahead and make sure that it is cut evenly. And you want to make sure that you're always brushing. And now we're not going to get rid of that line. We're going to go above that with our two guard all the way open. And this right here, I like to do is kind of just go down with it to make sure that the hair on the side is nice and laid down especially when the hair is long like that on top and then after we go ahead and do that we're going to go with our two guard all the way open and right here we're debulking and creating shape so right above that one open we're not necessarily making a guideline with this we're using that two guard open to create the shape of the haircut and to blend into that length on top as best as possible so you saw you saw me really flick out right there and now to get rid of that line between the one guard open and that two guard open, I'm going to come in with my one and a half lever open. And you'll see me just attack that line, really flicking out here. I'm not trying to create any more lines. And then if that at one and a half open isn't doing the job, we went ahead and closed the lever just slightly until that line is as blended out as possible. And you'll see me just continue to play with that lever, seeing what works and what doesn't. And as we attack that line, it slowly starts to, you know, disappear. Especially in the back, I'm paying extra attention to detail because of his occipital bone. And now to get rid of that last line, I'm going to come in with my half guard all the way open. With this half guard, I'm just going to go ahead and attack that line with the lever open. You know, really using that flick out motion so I don't create any lines. And then I'll gradually start to close that lever until that line is as blended out as we can get it, right? And then if that half doesn't do the job, we're going to go ahead and take it off and then just use the blade of the clipper 
But right now, we're just going open. And then we went ahead and closed the lever just slightly. And you can see right there where it kind of rounds to the back of his head. The hair is growing sideways. So you'll see me turn the clipper, um, you know, sideways to cut against the grain of the hair so I can get the best blend possible. And we're just continuing just to attack those, those dark spots, get rid of those lines. And now, since that half guard didn't really do the job, we're gonna go ahead and grab our one guard once again. And right here, we're just detailing. So we got through all our steps, and now it's just a matter of, you know, fine tuning it and getting it that Instagram quality look. So I'm attacking those dark spots with that one open because that is the guard that we used in this area, right? And you can see as we just continue to detail, it starts to come together. And then I just went ahead and I grabbed my one and a half just to go ahead and detail some more. So what we're looking for in this detailing process is any dark spots that throw off the fluidness of the fade, right? And now to go ahead and blend into the length on top a little bit better, I'm doing some clipper over comb. And I'm freehanding right here. So I'm going in with my comb and just flaring out slightly, trying to attack those dark spots and inconsistencies in the blend. And that's what it's about family all the detail and now we're coming in with my blade open using the corner of those blades to attack those dark spots just so we can make that blend look as consistent and as fluid as possible and just because we don't settle for average we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab our thinning shears to go ahead and get this blend to its fullest potential right because we don't settle for anything less than excellence so that is the level we are going to execute at. So right here, I'm just coming in with my thinning shears, attacking those dark spots, really using the, the thin side of my taper comb to get into those dark areas. And you can see how that blends uh, started to come together. And now we're gonna come over to this other side and we're gonna do these same exact steps, all right? Now, when I'm cutting on a normal day and I'm not recording the haircut, I do this all around the head, all at once. I don't do one side then the other, but for YouTube purposes, I went ahead and did one side and then we're just gonna go ahead and attack the other side. So I'm coming in with my clipper open and now to get rid of that line, I'm gonna come in with my clipper closed and then gradually start to open that lever as we move up into that open guideline. And I'm going to let you guys follow along a little bit, like, on your own. So I'm not going to do too much explaining here. But you're seeing, I'm just staying real patient. Understanding that the process will get me to the end result. If I stay true and, you know, consistent with it, so. And now, right above that clipper open, you already know we're coming in with that one guard open. And we're making sure that our guidelines are all the same width. So that way we can have, a, you know, an even blend that is nice and gradual. now we're going with the grain of the hair just trying to lay it down a little bit better since his hair is so curly and then we're going to come up against that with our two guard open just clearing some space getting rid of some hair and then creating shape as well because he likes his hair to have that flare out shape which i feel like really like complements his head shape because if we didn't do the drop in the back you know we'd be cutting all that hair off in his crown area and for some people, it just makes it a really awkward look, right? So that's why I feel like the drop suits this haircut. And now I went in with my one and a half open. And then right here, it's actually closed because I realized that the open wasn't doing the job. And you can see how it kind of just like flawlessly got rid of that line.
and now to get into the last step of the fading process i'm coming in with my half guard all the way open and then i went ahead and closed that lever a halfway and then i think i'm gonna close it here all the way i guess not so right here just halfway and i'm just attacking that line and then i opened it up some more as i move up and i believe right here i closed it and i'm just attacking those dark spots really playing with the lever and look at that blend man it's starting to come together very nicely and you can really see how like at the turn of his head right behind his hair ear his hair starts to grow kind of towards um his nape or back of his head area so i'm really making sure that i'm cutting against the grain and trying to uh make this blend look as consistent as possible and you can see that natural dark spot right where the divot from his occipital bone is so we're gonna go ahead and give uh give that some attention here in a second but right here i'm just still working with the half guard and right here i just pointed it out so i came in with my one and a half all the way open and then i'm gonna close it gradually as needed so now we're just adding some more detail to this i'm coming in with my clipper over comb trying to blend into that link on top a little bit better and we're just trying to get this haircut you know to that next level give it our own custom look that separates us from every other barber and now to go ahead and line up the arch on this side i'm going to start at the top of the arch and then i'm going to go to the bottom and connect it in the middle and that's how i'm going to get that nice round c shape without you know being too cosmetic and taking too much hair off to where we push him back and I don't know if you guys noticed, on the other side, I lined it up first before I started fading. And on this side, I faded first and then lined it up, right? So it's poss possible both ways, just depending on your preference. And he does have a tapered hairline, so we went ahead and sectioned it off. And then we're going to go ahead and trim it with our one and a half. And we're just going with the grain, trying to get this part to lay down a little bit better. And now to get into the lineup, we're going to start in the middle of his forehead. And we're going to move towards the right side of his head. And with this, we're trying to get it as sharp and symmetrical as possible while at the same time keeping it as natural as possible, you feel me? So I'm being real patient with it. I'm taking steps back as needed to make sure that I'm not, you know, pushing them back at all. And then I went ahead and combed it out. And now we're going to go ahead and go to the other side and do the same exact thing staying real patient brushing and combing as we do so to make sure that we're, we're getting it as sharp as possible and then we're gonna line up his box and now to go ahead and take this haircut to a whole nother level we're gonna go ahead and ha add some color enhancement so right here I'm just using kiss express mixed with alcohol and my airbrush and we're just gonna lightly spray down his hairline trying to keep it as natural looking as possible And his hair is so dark that we can use a generous amount just so we can, uh, you know, match the, the, the tone of his hair on top. But at the same time, you want to make sure that you're keeping it natural looking as possible. And now we're going to go ahead and hit him with the razor. And right here, you want to make sure that you're stretching the skin, right? Because the idea is all you want to do is get rid of all those hairs that the trimmer couldn't necessarily get. And really make this hairline super crispy, right? So right here, I'm just stretching the skin and you can see how the lineup is coming together. And now we're going to go ahead and bottom out with our trimmer. And this is as low as we're going to go. We're not going to use the shaver because um, his, his hair texture tends to have ingrown hairs and he bumps up very easily. So as you guys remember, we created our bald line with our clipper closed and we didn't touch the hair under it, right? And it's because it gave us a contrast when blending. But since we're done with the blend, we're going to go ahead and hit it with the trimmer. And I'm making sure as I bought it out, I'm not going into the fade, fade too much with the trimmer because I don't want to create any lines, right? But family, this is how my man came in and he wanted a little cleanup. So we went ahead and gave him a mid drop fade, put him back in the game. But family, if this is your first time on my channel, make sure you hit that like and subscribe uh, button. And if this video helps you in any way, shape or form, Make sure you drop a comment and let me know what you thought about this video. 
because it really helps the channel out but at, while you're at it go ahead and follow me at j clipper hands on ig where i have a lot more dope content but again thank you for watching this video catch y'all next time